Hello and welcome to this Manufacturing Process Technology Part 2, Module 23. Uh, we were discussing about how the heating effects uh, jeopardize the ECM process and how you can design the optimum flow uh, velocity so that the heat uh, transfer across the electrodes goes out and the electrolyte never reaches the boiling point. Today we are going to uh, do a little bit different uh, you know, <coughs> uh, aspect of the ECM which is obviously that one part is that when the heating uh, increases there is an electrolyte boiling. But there is a very important secondary aspect about even hydrogen bubble generation that changes the conductivity drastically of uh, an ECM setup and therefore uh, there are changes related to machining rates because uh, obviously the conductivity is different uh, based on wherever these hydrogen bubbles are generated. As you know hydrogen is generated as a result of uh, the formation of FeOH uh, in the uh, from the from the uh, workpiece and into the solution. So, the in the whole mathematical analysis uh, so far, uh, the different parameters and properties were assumed to be uniform throughout the phase of the electrode. We never assumed the conductivity to be varying, or for example, the uh, the other parameters like let's say temperature, etc., to be varying quite a bit. Okay. So, a variation in these properties except the machining processes. So, therefore, supposing if I were to tell you that hydrogen is getting generated the moment the electrolyte enters between the two electrode workpiece and as the electrolyte goes ahead hydrogen keeps on adding and the concentration keeps on increasing. So, obviously, there is going to be a gradient in the hydrogen concentration and a gradient in the conductivity because of such processes. So, Obviously, the electrolyte conductivity changes as the electrolyte passes along the gap owing to increase in the electrolyte temperature, the evolution of hydrogen bubbles and the formation of precipitates. Okay. So, this effect is very small in proportion obviously in comparison to the hydrogen, hydrogen changes conductivity quite a lot. Think of it like this. So, this is the tool workpiece and inter electrode gap uh, combination and you are flowing the electrode in this direction. So, obviously, the hydrogen gas goes on getting generated as the electrolyte goes past, but obviously the concentrations if we look at in the different zones let us say C 1, C 2, C 3, C 4, C 4 is greater than C 1, C 3 is greater than C 2 is greater than C 1 obviously because hydrogen is keeping on getting added as the electrolyte is flowing. Okay. So, because of the <laughs> flow of electricity the electrolyte temperature also gradually would increase. So, so far we assumed only constancy in the tool phase temperatures or the workpiece phase temperatures when we did the heat analysis, but we never considered the fact that what if the temperature here for example of the electrolyte and the temperature here as the electrolyte passes by is quite different from each other. So, obviously there are going to be changes in the machining removal rate from this zone all the way to the end zone here and obviously it will depend on the direction of the electrolyte flow. So, the conductivity changes would result finally in a non-uniformity in the current density. Current density as we know is proportional to the, the material removal rate and so therefore, the MRR would get changed substantially in the direction of the electrolyte flow. So, uh, I already mentioned about the bubbles and how they are swept by the electrolytes and the concentration of such bubbles would increase in the direction of the flow again uh, the overall conductivity of the current density would vary along the same direction. So, because of such variations, there uh, is always a possibility of the, the electrode tool surface, uh, the, the workpiece uh, tool surfaces to get uh, changed substantially because of such variations. And in fact, such electrochemical uh, machining processes would result in n number of issues which are related to the surface finish related to the uh, workpiece surface. So, in general a very good surface finish is desired in parts machined by ECM and uh, a, a study of the possibilities that may result in the bad finishing is uh, absolutely important. And obviously, as I told you these different factors uh, like selective dissolution, sporadic breakdown of the anodic film and the flow separation and formulation of eddies and evolution of hydrogen gas would all result into poor surface finish. So, uh, one aspect obviously is the overall uh, machining of the workpiece surface based on the direction of the electrolyte flow and the other aspect is obviously the surface finish related issues which come because of uh, the electrolyte flow. 
So, let us look at this uh, step by step first uh, look into the selective dissolution what we mean by that. So, let us say we are doing alloys okay, and we are trying to electrochemically machine alloys. So, in different alloys uh, there are different constituents they have varying electrode potentials and uh, you know even in pure uh, metals if you take uh, there is still uh, a problem that the dissolution potential at the grain boundaries are quite different from those inside the grain. So, the grain boundaries are obviously quite changed you know uh, in terms of its composition etcetera because of or even the orientation of the grain growth etcetera because it is really a merging between two different you know lattices grown in two different directions. Okay. So, uh, there are going to be some changes in the uh, aspects which are related to the dissolution process uh, of such boundaries. So, let us consider such an alloyed system where there are two phases A and B and uh, let us consider that these two constituents are placed in a ECM uh, machine uh, as the work piece and B is projected outside by a distance let us say delta in comparison to uh, A. So, the potential required for dissolution of the phase A is let us say V D A which is actually given by this region here right here and the potential required for dissolution of B in this case is slightly greater V D B which is uh, given by uh, this particular uh, line here. So, this is V D B this is V D A these are two phases obviously they have different dissolution potentials and this is being represented here. So, we would like to uh, presume here that there is an ohmic uh, drop in the electrolyte which is in between this gap this is all filled by electrolyte and there is a straight line ohmic drop as you can see here right here as the voltage changes between the cathode and the anode okay. and it is done in a manner. So, that uh, the VDA the available potential uh, is which would cause the, the start of the dissolution of the phase A is available at a surface. But if we look at you know the availability of VDB potential it is actually down underneath somewhere where the voltage uh, drop is so that it results in VDB. Okay. So, therefore, the phase B would start dissolving much earlier from probably this point in comparison to the phase A and therefore, uh, there is there is a tendency of surface roughness to happen. So, because obviously, the B is getting eroded at a much different uh, inter electrode gap in comparison to uh, the phase A. So, A and B would not really rhythm with each other as far as the uh, equipotential surfaces go. So, typically in a pure phase alloy we est estimated in our all calculations that this whole surface is equipotential and the dissolution would happen and the um, you can you can say the recession of the work piece would happen as a flat surface. So, in this case it is no longer true uh, anymore and so there is unevenness due to the difference in the dissolution potentials of the different phases. So, we can we can see here that in this figure the voltage profile across the gap has been shown okay, as I mentioned earlier resolution potential of B and A have been shown as V D B and V D A and the availability of the V D B at much inside the uh, inter electrode gap region is visible uh, and V D A only uh, you know provides the dissolution potential of A at a certain other distance and so there is always tendency of unevenness to happen between A and B. So, the required potential difference between a point on the surface and the adjacent electrolyte for the ECM to start must be either VDA or VDB and since the whole anode surface is equipotential and the electrolyte potential varies across the gap as shown the surface of the grain of B must be projecting away from the surface of the constituent surface A to meet the electrolyte with a lower potential. So, that a larger difference VDB is achieved so that dissolution can start happening. Okay. So, that is in the steady state the work surface will be uneven in general and not very smooth. Obviously, we are working on the differences of potential here one has to remember that is the V cathode minus V anode okay. that is how the difference comes in this particular case and uh, therefore, there is there is an uh, there is a very good reason of why unevenness in the surface should happen because of the different dissolution potentials V D A and V D B. So, the other interesting issue is that you know as a function of the inter electrode gap i g this roughness would vary still because it may have to project inwards uh, more or you know uh, less depending on how steep is the slope. So, if we had a steeper slope 
of the potential difference between the tool and the workpiece, then obviously uh, you will be able to achieve this VDB much faster in comparison to uh, what it were if the if the slope was not steeper. So if really the difference between the potential of the work and the tool is more, there may be a different machining rate, and there may be uh, you know uh, probably a more even surface. Uh, in comparison to when it were uh, smoother as in this particular case. So, comparing the electric fields, so an approximate expression of the projection height can also be derived. Let us say if we compare both the electric fields in this case, so we have some potential V minus V d A by Y as the electric field uh, which is there you know uh, from the surface A all the way to the tool surface. Let us assume the uh, V to be the anode potential in this particular case. And this becomes equal to V minus V d B by Y minus delta. Obviously, we know that a greater voltage would be needed or a greater resolution potential would be needed for the phase B in this particular case. Okay, but the electric fields are same, electric fields are parallel and they are quite same except some curling which happens at these corners and this corners, okay. but otherwise they are more or less same based on what is the voltage per unit distance. So, therefore, from this expression we can find out the value of delta as 1 minus V minus V d B by V minus V d A times of Y okay. and, and this is basically the uh, difference of heights between both phases as we do electrochemical machining. So, it gives you a ballpark idea more or less of uh, the overall average surface roughness uh, due to this. The other criteria for causing poor surface finishes uh, the sporadic breakdown of the anodic film. Let us uh, see uh, what, uh, what we mean by this. So, the main reason for the sporadic breakdown of the anodic film is the gradual fall in the potential difference between the work surface and the electrolyte in the region away from the machining zone. Let us say this is the machining zone and we are talking about this region away from the machining zone. So, obviously, as you know the electric field uh, between the tool and the workpiece would fall down as a function uh, as a square of the distance as it goes from this particular point all the way onwards and therefore, the, uh, the field overall that is available here or here or here would vary quite a bit and the field would be lesser and lesser uh, as we go ahead. You have to remember that there is electrolyte flow in this region where we are considering uh, this uh, field to sort of go out. So, the electrolyte is traveling all the way over this work surface into these regions uh, and probably you can say that a field is being created between the tool and work by virtue of the electrolyte flow over these regions. So, obviously, there is a variation in the surface potential of the anode because uh, the, the electric fields are different in different points away from the, uh, the tool work piece zone and here till the point P 1 the potential is enough to cause dissolution of all the phases. But if we consider an alloy and if we consider many phases to be present which is normally the case because you do not have control on the impurities to an extent of uh, you know uh, and obviously, uh, steel itself is an alloy of carbon and iron. So, therefore, there is a chance that up to potential P 1 everything is dissolving, but beyond that when the electrolyte uh, flow happens and the electric field dips down, there is a tendency of selective dissolution to happen. So, all phases which are having lower potentials than the let us say the potential the maximum dissolution potential phase would start coming off and therefore, uh, beyond P 1 the anode surface potential uh, would uh, sort of drop down to an effect that an increasing number of phases would stop dissolving resulting in a un uneven surface uh, away from the tool is electrolyte zone. So, even if we are machining in this zone we need to be concerned about the overall surface finish of the component because the electrolyte flows into this region. So, one of the ways to stop this from happening is to sort of guard the electrolyte flow from flowing out of the tool uh, you know electrode gap or the inter electrode gap. And this could be done by probably guiding the, the electrolyte only in the machining zone and not beyond. But the question is, there is always going to be leakages, and there are going to be aspects related to uh, to the such phase dissolution of workpiece when we talk about ECM. So ultimately, when only a few phases remain active and dissolve, a concentration of the electric field results, 
since the active phases occupy a portion of the anode surface and uh, if you have small points and crevices coming off you know in these particular regions there is always a tendency of field concentration to happen which would cause these phases to dissolve very rapidly and therefore uh, it would start forming pits in these regions which would be related to uh, the surface finish so obviously beyond p2 point the field is no longer effective it falls to such a low value that there is no uh, dissolution which takes place and so immediately around the vicinity of the uh, machined zone there is this formation of uh, the sporadic breakdown regions where there are small pits which are observed at the end of the ecm process the other uh, uh, cause major cause of uh, in improper surface finish in an ecm is given by this flow separation and formation of eddies so eddies are basically local recirculation zones which are formulated uh, very near the surface because of such uh, selective dissolution and such corners and crevices which result in any event the electrolyte flow is quite slow and uh, quite laminar in nature because of the ieg uh, being very uh, very very small and so therefore uh, obviously you can you can also think of it that in in this manner that as the electrolyte end exits out of the inter electrode gap there is really no guiding and there is a, a sort of a surface spreading of the electrolyte you could say over that particular region and the presence of hills and valleys on the anode surface because of such dissolutions cause a separation of the electrolyte flow and eddy formation so let's say for example if the electrolyte from this particular machining zone is flowing ahead and uh, let me just draw it little appropriately so uh, this is the machined zone and let's say these are the regions where such the breakdowns are happening so obviously as the electrolyte is flowing here and it's flowing with some small velocity there is a tendency of recirculating zones to get formulated or resist to this formulated over these regions so in these eddies which are separated from the main stream the only problem which happens is that the concentration of the metal ion starts increasing and there is a very large concentration of the metal ion because obviously metal ions are going to dissolve in the electrolyte in the presence of a field so this results uh, in a high concentration over potential in the eddies and introduces localized variations in the removal rates consequently an uneven surface finish in these regions of the surfaces so even if the eddies are present somewhere in the machining zone this is going to be a main problem so apart from the presence of hills and valleys the flow separation may also be co causing an important you know uh, may be caused by an improper design of the of the tooling system and the electrolyte flow path and so uh there may be uh, the need of quite a bit of care for a designer to uh, design the 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 flow direction and the flow path of an electrolyte in a manner so that such problems uh, don't happen the other issue related to the the surface finish is the evolution of hydrogen gas i think i had or earlier already illustrated how important it is that you know the concentration of the hydrogen gas uh, and variation therein results in uh, a lot of uh, material removal issues or non uniformities across the inter electrode gap uh, just a recall that the hydrogen starts coming out the moment uh, the dissolution starts happening from the uh, workpiece side to the tool side in this case let's say this is the tool this is the workpiece and the uh, arrows show the flow direction so the hydrogen keeps on oozing out and bubbling out and so the idea is that the concentrations in this zone and this zone and this zone are quite different c3 is obviously more than c2 is obviously more than c1 uh, because hydrogen keeps on adding to the uh, in the flow direction of the of the electrolyte so this uh, presence of hydrogen in the electrolyte reduces the specific conductivity of the solution quite a bit and so the material removal rate which is affected by the current density factor which is again dependent on the conductivity of the solution would be greatly Uh, uh you know jeopardized because of such uh, packing up of hydrogen gas within the electrolyte in the flow direction so this effect increases downstream with an increase in the hydrogen gas concentration resulting in an overall deterioration of the surface finish and, uh, and therefore it is very important for a uh, ecm uh, machinist to have a good idea of how to do the tool design so one of the issues that i have discussed earlier is that the ecm is a process uh, which can be also uh, 
better known as a die sinking process where the exact shape of the die and the negative imprint therein would be able to get uh, uh, accumulated on the on the surface which we are working on so there are two major aspects of such tool design one is determining the tool shape so that the desired shape of the job is achieved for given machining condition and another is uh, designing the tool for considerations other than uh, the overall tool shape uh, and one of them is obviously the electrolyte flow i had shown various reasons therein of why uh, surface finish can be jeopardized because of many process like selective breakdown selective dissolution or sporadic breakdown of the anodic film or uh, hydrogen gas accumulation and change in specific conductivity there or eddies or vortices or flow separation which results in all sort of surface finish problems so we will first look at the first uh, condition here which is uh, determining the tool shape so that the desired shape of the job can be achieved and uh, in 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 context of that i would like to uh, sort of have a little bit theoretical determination of uh, the tool shape okay uh, of particularly in the case of ecm process so when a desired shape of the machined workpiece surface is known it is possible to theoretically determine the required geometry on the tool surface which will cause this desired shape of the component or the design which uh, has been planned earlier for the component to be ex executed for a given set of machining conditions so let uh, the applied potential the over voltage and the feed rate be given by v delta v and f respectively in this particular case the equilibrium gap <coughs> between the anode and cathode surfaces can be expressed as g dash equals k times of v minus delta v divided by rho z times of f times of <coughs> small f cos theta where theta is the direction of inclination to the feed direction of the tool with respect to the workpiece so here obviously the uh, capital f here is the faraday constant uh, the z is the uh, total dissolvable valency k is uh, the specific conductivity of the with the fluid a is the atomic weight v uh, obviously is the voltage delta v is the over voltage potential d is uh, rho is the density of the phase that is removed and small f is the feed uh, rate in a direction theta with respect to the uh, the surface normal of the of the workpiece okay so i would like to first uh, select the uh, let's say the situation uh, you have a xy coordinate system uh, as shown here and you have a uh, surface which is to be determined okay so this is the uh, tool surface which needs to be determined the workpiece surface obviously is known to us from the design and uh, further the feed direction f is really at an angle uh, which is closing the equilibrium gap between the workpiece and the tool uh, and inclination direction theta okay so this really is theta that we are talking about and uh, <coughs> let's assume this to be the work uh, the tool and you know further uh, the the tool shape uh, which is shown here right here is estimated on the base of the basis of the work shape which comes from the design requirements okay so this really is the component design uh, requirement which has been given you already know what you have to machine through ecm process 
and let us assume that there is a functional relationship y equal to phi x which is followed by a two dimensional uh, you know curve which is a representative of the surface. So, we are only doing a 2D analysis here, okay. but obviously this can be extended to 3D, we will probably try and solve one example where we will do it in 3D as well. So, the coordinates x and y are so selected that the y axis and the feed direction are parallel. Let us consider a 2D case with no variation in the z direction. So, the work surface geometry in this particular case is given by a functional relationship. y equal to some phi of x. Further, let us assume a point P here in the work piece, which we know as P w, w stands for work and the coordinates therein are known to be x w y w. Okay. So, we want to predict what is the corresponding point on the tool uh, and the coordinate therein and the relationship between the same. So, let us say the corresponding point on the tool, which is a reflection of the p w here, we call this p t, okay, be represented by coordinates at x t y t. So, the whole goal here is that can I from the x w y w, which is known to me from this function relationship y equal to phi x, be able to predict the point p t, which has a coordinates x t, set of coordinates x t and y t. And so, the idea would be to develop a similar functional relationship on the tool side, provided the functional relationship on the workpiece side is known to you to design. So, having uh, said that, let us uh, look into uh, you know the condition when a steady state is reached. So, let us say when a steady state is reached, the gap between a point on the work surface also given by p w x w y w and a point on the tool surface given by p t x t y t can be done in a manner that our this p t p w should be equal to the equilibrium gap g e and obviously, then if I look at these coordinates y w minus y t which is actually represented by these two coordinates. Okay. I am sorry these two coordinates y w, y t similarly x w or x t. So, this is x t, this is x w. Okay. So, y w minus y t is given by p w p t distance cosine of theta. Okay. This is the p w p t distance. In other words, if I consider this to be the equilibrium gap G e, we have G e cos theta. In a similar manner, I can write x t minus x w as can be seen here, x t is greater than x w, okay. the x direction can be represented as p w p t sin of theta that is G e sin of theta. 
So, we will try to do something uh, in the next module, uh, where we will try to see if there is a relation which exists between the uh, the knowns which are x w y w in this case and the functional relationship there and, and uh, the x t y t where uh, a relationship has to be established. So, with this I would like to close this module uh, and in the next module let us do the whole tool surface design and try to solve some numerical uh, oriented challenges uh, where you can actually develop uh, from a design uh, requirement of, of, of particular component the actual tool shape. So, thank you so much.